Rosie, this pie is a really simple one. I'm using chicken, but you could use leftover vegetables. I'm sure you've got plenty of leftover vegetables in your house. But the trick is, you know, we cook food. We don't want to waste it, do we? No. We want to make sure we use up every single bit. So this is a great way of putting together a great little pie that will be delicious. Great stuff. Now, you've got some mushrooms there. I want you to slice them nice and thin. Get me working. You've got some rosemary and thyme. Chop that up as well. Mm -hmm. And I'll chop up this garlic. Now, I've always got garlic in the fridge, some celery and leek, and they go together to make this beautiful pie. You like this sort of thing? Oh, I do. Well, actually, whenever I see a bowl of chicken like that, it kind of reminds me of just the day after Christmas or something <laughs> like that. Or day after a roast dinner on a Monday and everybody's kind of making chicken sandwiches for lunch and stuff. Oh, I love that. Chicken sandwiches are the best. Now, I've got a big pot here, Rosie. I'm adding some extra virgin olive oil to the pan here. I want to sweat my veggies off just a little bit. The trick when you're making a pie like this is to get lots of different veggies because that's what brings out the flavour. But you could change it to anything. If you don't like mushroom, you could use little bits of eggplant or who, anything like that. Who doesn't like mushroom? I love mushroom. Now, these are banana shallots. I love these. You could use onions or red onions or, you know, spring onions, whatever you've got. I like to slice them nice and thin like this so they sweat down beautifully. Now, I like some leek as well. And I've taken all the green leaves off it and washed it really, really well. Really important when you're using leek to wash it really well. And mushrooms as well. Some people like yeah. to wash their mushrooms. I find when you wash them, they soak up a lot of, a lot of moisture. And what I'll do if, I, if they are really dirty, I just sort of put them into the water really quickly, take them out again and let them drain. Big sponges, aren't they? Exactly, they're big sponges. And you'll notice they're big sponges when you're cooking with them. They soak up all the oil that goes in there. Now, the leek I'm just going to chop nice and fine like that, all the way down to the end. Is there anything better than that smell? Butter, oh, no. leek, oh, I know, I know, it smells great. Well, I haven't put the butter in it already, but it's amazing. You have extra oh. special superpowers. What have you got in there? Well, you can smell the butter there. It's right in front of you, oh. but I've got the oil in there. I, I'm loving it. I'm turning into you. Maybe I think the butter, you know, all the butter stuff is just getting into you. It's on your skin all, all over your pores. Now, I've got some uh, salt goes in here and a good twist of pepper. I like to sweat it down nice and gently. And the herbs are really good as well. You've got plenty of herbs to go through there. Now, Rosie, I've got some rosemary and I've got uh, nice young leaves here. I just pull off a few of them and put them around. They're great with chicken. I do love rosemary in there. But be careful because it can be quite strong. So I'll pop that over oh, there. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? I get, when I'm getting told off, I get called rosemary sometimes. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll call you rosemary because <laughs> I should tell you off. And I'll just sweat that down nice and gently. You can see how quickly the leek sweats down. Give it a tap like that. And I've got some butter. Butter is what makes everything taste delicious. And I'm using butter to actually thicken up the sauce. Yeah. What I like to do is put some butter into the pan and some flour and some milk and some white wine, and I make a bechamel sauce. Now, if you add some more stock to it, it's called a velouté, but it's really, really delicious. Now, the trick with this is to have equal quantities of flour and butter to bind it all together. Now, this butter, I've probably got about uh, 150, 180 grams of butter that goes in there, and I'll just stir that around nicely until that butter starts to melt. Now, this is young, fresh thyme rosemary, and I love this stuff. You just throw it in there. It is so soft and flavoursome, in it goes, and that's going to smell delicious. Now, Rosie, I've got, I was going to call you Rosemary. Now, Rosemary, right. can you pass me the flour, please? <laughs> can you pass that over there? There we go. You can see the butter has melted down beautifully. And this is the stage you add some flour. I'll add a good two big spoons of flour. And what you want to see is it coming together. And this will actually form a roux, which actually soaks up all of that butter. And this will be the thickening agent. Now, you see it's starting to bubble away yeah. nicely there. And I'll put a little bit more in there. I probably should use a clean spoon to put into the flour, but it's our flour. We can, we can get away with something. We can do what we want. Exactly. Now, can you pass me the milk over there, Rosie? Sure. There we go. Rosemary. I keep calling you Rosemary. You shouldn't have told me that, because I, I just keep calling you Rosie. There we go. Now, the milk's there, and I've got some white wine. As I stir this around, I'll add about half a cup of white wine here. If you've got chicken stock, you can add that. You can even use water if you wanted to, but when you use white wine and the milk together, it gives it a lovely flavour. Now, I'll just pour some of that into there, and we'll add a little bit at a time. You can see how beautiful and creamy this milk is. Now, this is the right amount for the sauce, and I want to try and get about 700 mils of sauce. So I'll stir this around a couple of minutes and then add a little bit more milk until I get the right sort of volume. And the trick with this, Rosie, is just to let it simmer for three or four minutes to make sure that flour is cooked all the way through. While it's simmering, I'll throw in some uh, mushrooms to cook them all the way through, and then we should be ready to put it all together. Now, Rosie, the mushrooms are cooked nicely, but I don't overcook them. 
It smells yeah. great, doesn't it? Yeah, it's thick as well. That's what you want. It's a pie. You want it wow. to sort of go all the way through, and when you spoon it out, it becomes nice and tasty. Now, I've got some cream there. Yeah. Put about a quarter of that cream in there, about 100 mils of cream in there, just to make it luscious and delicious. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. That enough? That's, yeah, yeah. That, that's my version of cream. That's my 100 mils. That should have been slow mode, shouldn't it? Well, it's, I just love it. Now, you can see the cream goes through it beautifully. I'll turn that off. Rosie, just chuck the uh, parsley straight into the pot here. Yeah. Now, while I'm stirring this in, those peas, put it all over the chicken. You can see I've right. got a whole roast chicken, and I've pulled it apart. I'll leave a little bit of the golden skin on the outside of it. If you wanted to, you could actually put the stuffing in there as well. Now, that's going to go over the top here like this, and you can see it's going to cover the whole lot. Make sure all the sauce goes to the bottom there and covers the top there. Look at that. Wow. That looks delicious. You don't want to put too much on there. I've got a little tiny bit left over. That would be for some pasta. You could actually get some pasta, pop it in there, stir it around, a little bit of milk, and that would be a great finishing great dish. Idea. Now, the katafi pastry. This is a great pastry. People think it's shredded pastry. It's not. The way they make this is they have like a tin with lots of fine holes on it and a barbecue plate. You stir it around like that. That's how you make this pastry. But this is made on an industrial scale, so you can see it's just beautiful. Stunning to pasta. work with, isn't it? Now, the trick with this pastry is to let it come up to room temperature. Probably not freeze it, but let it yep. come up to room temperature and then just work it apart. You want to have all these fine filaments pulled apart so that when yep. it cooks, it stays really, really really crispy. So if you want, you can pull it apart like this, what we're doing now, into little pieces like this, and there we go. Now the trick with this is the same as phyllo pastry in a lot of ways, which you have to use some oil or some butter yep. to give it some crispness. That's what actually cooks it. Now we'll bring this in over the top here, and Rosie, what I want you to do is just pop the pastry on top here, but really loosely. We want it to stay nice and fluffy on top there, so it sort of sits up nicely. There we go, look at that, Ooh, that looks lovely. Fantastic. Doesn't matter any hang down, that's fine. Oh, a little bit over the a top. A tiny bit. That's nice like that. Now I'm using just about a whole packet in here, and I think I'll just stack it all the way up to the top there. Wow. Now if it does start to overflow a little bit, I will pop a tray on the side of it. Pop that in there like that. Now the butter. This is the fun part, Rosie, and I've just melted some butter here and I just pour it all over the top here. Just drizzle it on like this and this will make the pastry fry. This is the trick wow. to making sure it's nice and crisp. Do you live for moments like this? Oh, I love this. Now a good trick would be if you pop the uh, katafi into a bowl, you can pour the butter into it and mix it around with your hands. Yep. It gives you a great opportunity to put some pistachio nuts in there or some almonds. You can do any of that sort of stuff. This will go into an oven. I've set it at 180 degrees, but keeping in mind that everything is already cooked in there. So all we need to do is crisp it up on top. I can't wait to get into this one. Into the oven we go, Rosie. Rosie, I've let it cool down just a little bit because it'll be red hot inside. Looks great, doesn't it? I think this might be one of the quickest, simplest pies you've made with the most aesthetic wow. Like, it, that is unbelievable, isn't it? It'll feed a lot of people. And funny you should mention it is, is have a look at the pastry on the outside. It's almost like my hair, isn't it? There we go. Ginger top pie, it's or should call it that? just like your hair, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. Now, I'll take some of that. <laughs> Mixture out of there. You can see that is steaming oh, hot. Oh, isn't it? Got chicken in there. Oh, I'm just going to rip off a bit of this. Lovely creamy sauce, and the peas have stayed nice and green as well. Looks like a great simple meal that's going to feed a lot of people. Nourishing. Now be careful because this is red hot. There's a real crunch to this, which I'm sure is delicious because it's very creamy mm. inside. Mm. That is fantastic. Mm. The creamy sauce is great. And that crunch, because you've got the, the sauce is so soft and delicate, that crunch just gives you something to bite. That is a great little way of turning leftovers into gold. What do you think? Well done.